If you're studying for the MCAT and you're wondering what resources should I use, I've got you covered. I'll walk you through all the materials that are out there and I'll also talk about what resources I use myself. Hey everyone, my name is Kia and welcome to the Kia Effect. I created this channel so I can help students excel in university and also make the process of getting into medical school way easier, whether it's help with applications or the MCAT. Before getting started, let's break down MCAT into three phases. The first phase is content review. In this phase, you'll learn about all the materials that will be covered on the MCAT. The next phase is practice. As the name suggests, in this phase, you'll do a lot of practices and reinforce what you've learned in the content review phase. The final phase of the MCAT is doing AAMC practices, as well as doing some full length practices and some final reviews. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Phase one, content review. MCAT exam itself has four sections that are respectively chemistry, which includes topics in uh, organic chemistry, general chemistry, as well as physics. Then we have the critical analysis and reasoning skills or CARS. The third section of the MCAT is bio section, which includes topics in biology and biochemistry. And the last section of the MCAT is psych -soc, which are psychology and sociology. I want to say here that all the resources I'll talk about in this video, they all be in the captions. To start your content review phase, you need a set of textbooks that you can start and read over to understand better the materials that are covered. I highly suggest Kaplan books myself. These are great books to start. Kaplan MCAT review books are seven books in total. However, I only use four of them. I've only used the biochemistry book, the biology book, the general chemistry book, and organic chemistry book. Also to cover the physics section, I, instead of going over and read over the Kaplan book that sounded kind of confusing to me myself, I found this YouTube channel that summarizes the concept from physics from the Kaplan book and explain them in a really good manner and also it's so much faster. So you can save so much time ju just watching the video instead of going over the books and reading over the books. So now we have covered the content review for the bio section and chemistry section of the MCAT. These are all the resources I used. And as you can see, I could do 130 plus in both chemistry and bio section of the MCAT, only using these materials. There are also other textbooks available, such as the Princeton Review, but I myself only use Kaplan. I never seen the Princeton Review, so I cannot tell much about it, but my students and I both used the Kaplan books and we were happy with them. So I can say that Kaplan books are sufficient to do good in the MCAT. One more thing that I want to recommend about using the review books is that try to get the PDF version instead of using the actual book. For me, it was so much easier to read over the textbook when they are in paper, but uh, I would say use the PDF version for two main reasons. First reason is that you need to maintain, you need to build up the stamina to look over a laptop and read on the screen. The second main reason is that taking notes for the MCAT is crucial. I took a lot of notes and used them all the time. It was really helpful. Taking note with hand, it takes forever. For the same reason, I suggest using the PDF. Using the PDF version of the textbook, you can easily just copy paste the section you're looking for. And also you can take a screenshot of the diagrams and just paste them into your either Google Word, Doc, or whatever sources you use for taking notes online. Now to cover psychology and sociology, what I did myself is only watching the Khan Academy videos. They explain every concept you need to know. One other resource that I use for psych social section is the 300 pages uh, summary of psychology and sociology. Uh, this is also really useful. It kind of is confusing, especially if you've never learned psychology before. It might sound really confusing at first, but you'll get used to it. Only using these two, I was able to actually get the full mark in my psych section. And I think these resources are sufficient to do amazing in your psychology and sociology. Now let's talk about the CARS section of the MCAT. This section is one of the slowest to improve. And although this section does not need any prior knowledge or any type of content, it's really important for you to start practicing this section as soon as possible. To start practicing your CARS, one resource that I can suggest and it's free, is called Jack Weston. It is a website you can sign in and you'll have access to many, many passages of CARS. These passages are not exactly how the AAMC or how the actual MCAT questions will be. So just keep this in mind, but still they are amazing practice. There are a lot of them, which makes it perfect for early on. 
One other resource for cars that you can start early on, and this resource is not a cars practice, but it's actually a cars planning book called 30 Day Guide to MCAT Success. This is a great resource for you to plan out your practices only for cars section of the MCAT. Coming up next is the second phase practice. In this phase, which is the practice, you'll need only one resource, and that is UWorld. UWorld is a website that you have to purchase a membership. Uh, it is kind of expensive, but I think it's worth it. It's really worth it because UWorld has a lot of questions in every section in cars, psychology, biology, and chem. And you can actually choose the number of questions you would like to do for each section and create many mini tests. What makes UWorld so competitive among all the other resources is that when you've done a section and you're reading over the question, they actually provide amazing summaries of every concept you need to know to answer the question. Again, UWorld explanations are amazing and they have a lot of summary tables and a lot of diagrams that makes it so easy to just comprehend and follow along. So if you are doing the content review phase and you are feeling lost, you feel like there's so much to know and you're not understanding everything, do not worry because when you get to the practice phase and practicing with UWorld, you'll see all these details again and you rehearse them as soon as you're doing the practice. A common question I get all the time from students is that, do you recommend when we are doing the content review to also do the UWorld practices so we can complement what we just learned through the practice? And although this sounds great, but this is not something that I recommend. If you are doing the content review and practice in the same time, then you're risking forgetting everything in a month and not rehearsing the materials that you need to. Also in this phase, if you needed some extra cars practices. One really good resource for cars is the 101 passages, which has a lot of passages. We can also do the Khan Academy cars practices. They are also amazing. I think Khan Academy is actually the closest to the AMC itself. So phase three, now it's time for you to do the AMC questions as well as the full length exams. AMC is the company that creates the MCAT itself and it's the company that designs the MCAT questions. AMC questions are the closest to the MCAT itself, so I suggest purchasing all the materials that they offer and do all of them. There are not many of them, so it shouldn't take more than 20 days to finish all of the AMC materials. While you are doing the AMC practices, and also before when you are still doing the practices from UWorld, I suggest start doing the full length practices. It helps you to build the stamina, but also get used to the MCAT condition and know and find out what are the things you're struggling with and things that you have to improve on. There are many resources for doing the full length exams. Of course, the most important full length exams to be done are the AMC full length. These exams are actually really close to what you will get in the actual exam. So make sure you're saving those for the last before your exam. So you have a good idea of what your score gonna be like. AMC offers six full length exams, two are free to use, and four of them are to be bought. There are also some third-party full-length existing that you can purchase and use. Uh, one of the most popular one is the Blueprint. That's what I use myself. Purchased four exams from Blueprint so I can get some more practice done. And they also have one free exam. It's not a full exam, it's a mini exam, which is half the time of the actual exam, but it's a great start. There is also Altius MCAT practices and I believe Princeton Review full-length MCATs. I never used those because uh, when I was researching, I found out that these are not as good as Blueprint, but I still, any resources for full-length exams are using that are not AMC, be sure to know that these are not representative of the actual MCAT and they're not an accurate estimate of what you'll get in the MCAT. Finally, to do some final reviews before going to your MCAT exam, you can use the MCAT review sheet. This is a great resource. This is amazing. This has summary of everything you need to know before going to the MCAT. Also, this last month is a great time for you to go over your notes and just retake some of the notes you have forgotten or perhaps you think are high yield. One thing that you have to know by heart are the amino acids. I use this app myself. I used to do it every night before going to the bed when I was studying for the MCAT. So this app made it so much easier for me to memorize and learn about amino acids. If you follow this three phase approach, you'll build a solid foundation, you'll practice efficiently and finish strong with the AMC materials. Please drop your questions in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, share this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.